From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Again, le llama de los Estados Unidos. Ah. Johnny? Yes. Pat McCracken, Universal Adjustment in Hartford. Oh, hi, Pat. Now listen, as you requested, I had a man sent out to Mrs. Lanfear's Long Island home to see if she'd returned. I suspicion wrong, Pat. She's still here, very much so. Will you listen? Shoot. The man was a little overambitious. Let himself into the house through a basement window. So? While he was there, the telephone rang. He wasn't crazy enough to answer it. Crazy like a fox. It was long distance from right where you are now, San Juan del Perro. And Johnny, I suspect it was from the man on whose policy she's made a claim for a quarter million dollars. Her dear departed husband, Douglas Lanford. Right. Now, if so, her claim on him, at least, is fraudulent. So see if you can dig up some proof. Brother, I have it. The man is anything but dead. Huh? It was Douglas Lanfear who wrecked our plane when we tried to land here a few hours ago. And Johnny, get him. Sure. If he doesn't get me first. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location San Juan del Perro, Nicaragua. To the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an accounting of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Sea Legs matter. Two hundred fifty thousand insurance claimed by Mrs. Constant Lanfear for the death of Douglas Lanfear. An additional hundred and fifty thousand for the loss of the yacht, the Sea Legs. Claim number one now proved to be fraudulent. As for number two, the claim on the yacht. Expense account item 14, $2 American, to the banana plantation worker who pulled us out of the small plane that Douglas Landfair wrecked as we tried to land. And another dollar to said plantation worker for a ride into town in his ancient truck. I must admit that this is one time that my ubiquitous assistant, Oscar Patrick Vladimir Pasquero, came in handy through his knowledge of the Spanish-Indian dialects spoken in these parts. Apparently, San Juan del Perro had once been a fairly busy little seaport. But over a period of years, the sea had slowly and inexorably washed in shallow sandbars, and only a handful of small cargo and fishing boats now negotiated the narrow channels that led out to the Blue Caribbean. The town itself was scattered around a small marketplace near the docks. There were a few stone and brick buildings, including the San Andrea Hotel, but most of them were weather-beaten frame structures. An occasional aged American car kicked up the dust, but most of the street traffic was ox carts. Item 15, $2 American, to a doctor with an unpronounceable name who came to our room at the San Andre and patched us up. And about 7 p.m. he left after instructing us to spend the rest of the night in bed. Item 16, another $2 for a sumptuous dinner brought to our room. American dollars, I learned, go far in this place. Unless, of course, Oscar gets his hands on them. You should let me handle all the bills for you while you're here in Nicaragua, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, sure, and let you take a 50% commission on all of them, huh? No, thanks. Oh, but, Mr. Dollar, I'm... When the poor fellow who rented us that plane to get down here starts patching it up, my expense account is going to take a big enough beating. Have no fear. I will supervise the repairs on the plane myself. Yeah, for a small pittance. Yeah, of course. Ah. Uh, uh, what a wonderful dinner. Now, to sleep it off. Well, you sleep all you want to. I got work to do. Work? Yeah. Hey, besides, you still haven't told me why we flew down here in the first place. I still don't understand. Listen, Oscar, a couple of years ago, Landfair lost a power cruiser off the Boldero Islands. I know. I told you I helped him and his wife and his captain get to shore. He collected $85,000 for that boat from his insurance company. I saw the boat. It was worth the 85000 So he should have insured it for more. Maybe 100000 Made himself a profit. Well, a very poor businessman. Would you listen? The ease of collecting on that loss must have given him ideas. What's more he could do with some money? The parental estate was running low. Anyhow, a few weeks ago, he brings a yacht, a motor sailor down here. The sea lakes. Right. This one's insured for 150000 And his own life is insured for a quarter million. Uh-huh. Maybe he's not such a bad businessman after all. He takes the sea lakes out to the very same place where he lost the first boat. This time, he leaves his wife ashore. He and the skipper go out alone, presumably to check on some new radio equipment he's installed. Sure, we made the radio contact from my own personal sender on shore at Puerto Gardo. But the contact was suddenly cut off. I heard it. And the next thing we know, Mrs. L is back at her home on Long Island, claiming a total of 400000 Well, 
Why not if she thought he went down with the boat? Because I don't think she did. What's more, I'm going to uh, prove... Uh, of course I knew it all the time. Because if he drowned off the Bulldara Islands, what was he doing here today, driving the car that wrecked our plane? Unless he was dead. And do you know something, Mr. Dollar? I don't believe it. Oscar, there was somebody in the cabin of that other plane waiting to take off with him after he smashed our landing gear. You didn't see who? No, but I'll give you odds it was Constant Lanfear. Another thing, she said that when the sea legs went down, she heard it go over the radio. You said that the signal just suddenly cut off. Mr. Dollar, you don't think the yacht was wrecked at all? Not any more than I think Lanfear went down with it. Then where is it? Well, I have a hunch it's right here in San Juan del Perro. Yes, but wouldn't everybody know the boat? Oh, Oscar, one of the oldest insurance rackets in the world is to fake a shipwreck, take the hull to some obscure foreign port, dress it up in new paint and rigging, then put it to sea again. Now, why didn't I think of such a good... Now, if I remember rightly, I spotted a couple of old shipyards down here when we circled the land. Uh, Yeah, sure, but there's only one that does any work. Do you know where it is? Of course I do. (laughs) You see how invaluable I am to you? Then that's where we're going right now. Uh, But, Mr. Dollar, what if you do find the boat? What do you mean? Mr. Lanfear has already flew the goose. He, he took off in that other plane after we cracked up. Look, we'll take things as they come along. Right now, while we're here, I want to look for that yacht. I saw an excellent picture of it, and I'm sure if I find it, I can identify it. And if we do find it? We will have twice the case against the Lanfears. Mr. Dollar. Mr. Dollar, I am fortunate to be working for such a sterling silver 14 carat genius for the most outstanding, intelligent... Get your hands out of my pockets. There's one other thing I'd like to find. One person, unless Lanfair murdered him. Who? His one-man crew. Oh, Raymond Gonzalez. The the same man as on the first trip. Well, if he was allowed to live through the first wreck, he was probably in cahoots with Lanfair and therefore is still around. Would you recognize him if you saw him? Maybe so, maybe not. The, The first trip, he was big and fat... Uh, the second trip, he was skinnier. He, he wore a beard on his face. If he's changed again, yeah. Oh, you're a lot of help. I thought you never forgot a name or a face. But, Mr. Dollar, him I never made any money off of. <sighs> well, come on, get into your clothes, and let's prowl around the shipyard. It was only a few minutes after eight, but the town was practically asleep, except for an old saloon down near the docks. Quietly, so not to disturb the snoozing night clerk, we let ourselves out of the hotel and headed for the waterfront. The night was clear and moonlit, so we had no trouble finding the way. I glanced hopefully into the open door of the dockside saloon as we passed it, and I chuckled at the incongruity of the music blurring away. But of course, saw no one that... Wait a minute, Oscar. Yes, sir? At that table in there, drinking beer. Hey, can one of them be the Raymond Gonzalez you mentioned? So who can tell from here? In San Juan del Perro, there must be a hundred who are skinny and wear a dirty little beard on their face. Could you tell from close up? Sure. What, he recognize you? So what? Well, it might not be very healthy for you. Ha! Ah, Mr. Dollar, working on an important campaign for you, my dearest friend, I would gladly lay down my life for you. For a small pittance, of course. Of course. Anyhow, how would he know I am working for you? Okay. Okay, then. Saunter in and take a look. Okay. I'll wait right here. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> it's a, a nice uh, weather we are having, huh? Es buen día, no? no? Uh, <sighs> Well, 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 if it isn't my old pal, Ramon Gonzalez. Uh, how are you, Ramon? Mr. Rajero. Yes, Rajero. Me? A stranger? Why, I am one of your oldest and dearest friends. El mi amigo, remember? Salgate, extranjero. Get out. But I am Oscar Patrick Vladimir Pesquero. You know, just a fine old Spanish name. Who helped you ashore that time when you... No, 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 no. no. Put on that bottle. Salga, lárgate de aquí, o si no te mato. No, no, no. Te mato. (laughs) Mr. Dollar. Mr. Dollar. Yeah, I don't think they liked you to interrupt that little beer party. He threatened me with a mic. He said he would kill me. Is he Ramon Gonzalez? Uh Oh, yes, yes, I'm sure of it. 
You see, Mr. Dollar, he did not go down with the ship. You're telling me. Well, aren't you going to do something about him? Later, if I locate the sea legs. Cautiously, quietly, looking back over my shoulder now, we prowl through the old shipyard. And finally, led by the smell of fresh paint, I found it. The once clean white hull was painted a gaudy red and blue. And given the appearance of age, the mahogany rail and taffrail had been replaced with iron pipe. The beautiful teakwood deck painted a dirty gray. The wheelhouse had been moved, the cabin altered, even the mast, bowsprit, and general rigging changed. Stanchions, cleats, all the hardware that had once been polished bronze was now corroded or painted over. All in all, a quick, very thorough job of disguise, of change, from a graceful, expensive yacht to a rather weary-looking fishing schooner. But it was the sea legs, all right. I would never believe it, Mr. Dollar. I, I, I never would have recognized it. Are you sure? Run your hand over the transom here. Hmm? You can feel where the lettering has been painted over. It doesn't strike him much. I can see. You better not. Somebody... He... It's too late now. But do you see where the outline of the lettering is underneath this last coat of paint? Sea lakes. But it was such a beautiful boat. And now it looks like... Like a dirty old tramp. <sighs> well, what do we do now? Go back to that saloon and latch on to Ramon Gonzalez. Make him talk. Sure. Only, uh, I... <laughs> I'll wait for you. Huh? Well, he's so big and strong, Mr. Dollar, and, and that knife in his belt. Why, I thought you said you'd lay down your life. Uh, sure, sure, I... But what could he tell you that you don't already know now? Where the land first headed when they took off on that plane. Come on. But I... Okay, you lead. Alto, senor. Uh -huh. Mr. Dollar, it's him. You like the man to show me the way. Gracias. I was afraid of that. Look, the knife in his hand. Oscar, if he makes one move to throw it, pull the trigger. Trigger? What Yo, trigger? Am I, I going? No, 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 no. I swear I... But I have a couple of fists. Uh -huh. Well, let's bring him in. Bring him to so I can question him. No, 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 no. Let, 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 let's get out of here. Please, Mr. Dollar. He, he may have a friend around. Quite right, Oscar. He has. And this one carries a gun aimed straight at Mr. Dollar's back. Well, well. Mrs. Lamphere. Surprised, Johnny? <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about the final episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, sometimes when you wind up a case, things take a turn, a sudden switch that makes you wish you hadn't won. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>